happen. We are getting more, not drama, but it's basically Crunchyroll disabling comments permanently to censor the community. And they replace translators with AI. Let's see what's going on with Crunchyroll from Chibi. To Crunchyroll now using AI subtitles for its newest anime, Nokutan, as a good example. Yeah. To them disabling the comment section on their entire website for news articles and even anime episodes. You can no longer see the comment section here. I'll even reload just to prove the point. This is the last episode of Mushoku Tensei Season 2. And as you can see, there is literally no comment section. I'm even signed in just to prove Why the point. Why do they do it? And if you go to my video I literally made yesterday when I uploaded a Tower of God video, you could see the comment section. So yeah, this is legit. Legitimately a change that just happened like a few hours ago, like six or so hours ago. Low-key, based Crunchyroll, they got tired of reading your all monkey-ass fucking opinion in the comment section. Straight up, that's how I feel with the YouTube comment section of my own videos. I'm like, just watch the video and fuck off. But the comments is an essential place, right? It's just, obviously, what Crunchyroll is probably facing some kind of backlash. Maybe they got started to get straight up roasted by people for whatever something they did. What happens? And it's uh, obviously making the rounds in the anime community. But let's start with the subtitles first because obviously this is something that is an ongoing story. I've been kind of covering on the channel for almost a year at this point. But the reason why this is obviously happening is for a variety of reasons. For Such one, as? companies nowadays, you know, they uh, are investing more in AI. We've seen it with many different sites. I mean, hell, you look over here on the left, you can see Grok, which is like an AI algorithm thing that Twitter uses. Anyone use Grok, by the way? I saw that shit and I was like, what is the utility? I don't really care. You have Google using AI. You have just all different sites needing their own algorithm with AI, etc. It's just been an ongoing thing for a few years now. And it's definitely progressing. And, you know, love it or hate it, regardless if you dislike AI, it's very clear that companies want to use AI mm -hmm. a lot more than they did Saves in the money. past. And obviously, with the inclusion of AI, that means that, you know, people with actual, like, real jobs are going to lose their jobs to said AI because AI and to that I say good and hear me out right this is the essential thing that people don't understand about AI a lot of people especially Yasmin Gold have this take of like people lose their jobs good you know why because your life is more important than doing monotonous automated work you should be doing something else while the technology does that boring shit for you so that you can live your life in an ideal world the government would then give the citizens the universal basic income while utilizing AI so that the people don't have to do fucking monotonous tasks and waste the fucking entirety of their lives doing this bullshit for the sake of paying bills, right? That's why I say good. However, what's the reality? It's not going to happen like that, right? These people are going to lose their jobs. There's not going to be universal basic income. We're basically just getting fucked from both, you know, the start and the end. That's why it sucks. But I, I think that in an ideal world, right? AI should be used in a way to free people's time so they can live their lives, but due to corporate greed, they're going to lose their jobs, and you won't get any support. You just get double fucked is going to take their jobs away. Translators being replaced by AI is something that the community has been a little bit mixed on for at least a good year now. And the reason- I hear two sides. One side is, just give me AI subs. I'd rather have botched AI subs than have some woke fucking blue hair girl changing the bulk of the dialogue because they have their own agenda with what they think is acceptable in the Western society, right? When the anime never meant to do that. That's what I think what was happening with Katarina and Rev, right? for that it all kind of goes back around to may dragon anyone that remembers like you know at the beginning of this year to late at the end of last year there was a lot of drama a lot of people were finding Kobashi out basically made. about uh you know how a lot of localizers were changing subtitles to i need to understand how these people get their jobs like why do these people become a localizer and have authority to do this bullshit like who decides this shit have propaganda or agenda pushing, etc. You know, basically having political messages thrown into anime subtitles that really shouldn't have been there. But you even have dubs as well that just straight up changes the entire series just to fit a message for the audience. You know, a lot of people started finding out about that. I made a few videos talking about it. Even Asmongold talked about that as well at the beginning of this year. You know, he found out about it. And obviously, as I covered in those videos, even the translator that was kind of responsible or a localizer that was responsible for it just straight yeah. up blocked me when I never even talked <laughs> to them. I never even even really made a video on the topic and then i was already blocked so it just it says a lot about the whole i think it, that does say a lot like this, again ra completely random example but like did y'all know that fraud lad of scams 
blocked freshest anime before they ever interacted. What does that tell you? If you if you've been following the drama with that shit. I'm just saying, if you've never interacted and they blocked, there's like, there's something else going on behind the scenes. ...whole entire situation. So, getting into the main point, for a while now, obviously, the community has been split to where it's like, they don't want AI because obviously, uh, actual human translating things is better in the grand scheme of things. And that's just case in point right there. But the thing is, is that... I think that a hybrid way of utilizing AI to speed up the bulk of the work and then a human going over to proofread such that nothing was lost in translation would be the ideal scenario. But, ugh. I mean, that, and that's happening with a lot of jobs right now. A lot of white collar office jobs. You, you've seen all the tech layoffs. You've seen all the different hiring freezes, what's going on. A lot of that has to do with obviously government, you know, giving interest free loans to corporations and them over hiring to try to capitalize on the interest free period. And then once that was up, they started to cut people off because they over hired and realized that the growth was never, you know, um, it was never long term, it was short term. A lot of that had to do during, you know, Rona times, right? And then there is this advent of AI coming in, which really increases productivity in a way that instead of having three engineers to do three tasks, you have one engineer with the help of AI doing three tasks. And it's just, that's what's going to happen in the future too. More people are going to lose their jobs. It's going to be replaced with hybrid model of a person in AI. And that job displacement, again, I think that people are not meant to do labor you know, for the big bulk of their lives and then, and then they can live their lives when they're like 60 and just die? No, I feel like AI is a great thing if you can just make the right rules and regulations and support the people that's been displaced from those jobs. But again, that's not the case right now, right? People are just losing their jobs. AI is taken over and we're fucked until the government does something about it. Will they do something about it? Probably not. Have you seen the fucking presidential, you know, candidates, you know, for USA right now? We're, we're cooked. We're absolutely cooked that there has been so many bad actors within the space for a while now that has just done irreparable damage to anime and manga translations that people just don't trust translators anymore to the same degree as fan translations and so they welcome AI replacing these translators which if you look at these posts if you go into the comments and I get that sentiment right you would rather have a little bit of out of context misplaced you know botched AI subs that's like 80, 90% correct and have some woke motherfucker just change the entire script to fit their political agenda. Like, I get that, right? Etc. You go into the quote retweets and all that. You will find many, 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 many people basically saying that this is a good thing. That, you know, translators or localizers are being replaced by AI. Because anyone that sat down and watched the, uh, the first episode of Nokotan... This entire translation for Nokotan is AI. It is an AI translation. Now, to be blunt with you, I I'm going to be completely blunt. I have not watched this translation. <laughs> I watched the fan translation that came out like four or five days ago. Okay. As you remember, I made a video on, you know, Nokotan making a brief little like shit post video basically with the music and stuff, with the Dark Souls music. And I watched the fan translation before the official came out. But from what I have heard and reading through like the, the section of what people have been saying about like the translations, the translations, despite a little bit inaccuracies here and there, it's for the most good. part, it keeps to the point and it's just a literal translation and like there's just a little bit with a uh, pronunciation or something that's like a little bit messed up within it but overall the translations are really really good and so basically nobody knew about it until the episode came out and the news broke so basically what it lets us know is is that people are like wow ai translations really it's actually pretty good right you didn't even know it was ai until the news broke so what does that mean it means that it's actually pretty decent. They aren't that bad. Now, I'm not going to get into that whole can of worms, etc. Because I am still a part of the party that believes that an actual human translating is better than an... Yeah, I, I think that as long as you have... Uh, right now, anyways. With the technology we have right now, right? I think having a human to proofread after the AI is done, you know, parsing through everything is the most optimized way of doing it. But... In 5-10 years, I think the technology will be so good that you won't even need that. Like, straight up, everything will be just AI translated. That's how I see the future. AI, but I do think that obviously the reason why people are celebrating an AI doing this is because obviously there's just been so many bad actors. Basically, just to say fuck you to the localizers, but it, it's a complicated topic because like, if you support AI, does that mean that you support... You know, a lot of people losing their jobs and their livelihoods, right? And it's easy for you to say, skill issue, just find a different job. Imagine you lost your fucking job. Imagine your parents lost their fucking jobs. 
Like, try to have some empathy for other people's situations if their fucking livelihood on, on, on the line. Actors as of late for a very long time that just continue to have this space to push this agenda within different shows that people are tired of it. It's kind of like journalism. You know, like when you think about like game journalists, etc. You know, obviously game journalists are always memed on. They're, you know, crapped on all the time because like, you know, they're they shit. can't play games right or etc. You see that all the time. But obviously there is probably a few game journalists that aren't really good at their job. But because there's just such a overwhelming saturation of bad actors within that space, people just joke and meme on the entire game journalist in, uh, part of the industry. And the same can be said basically now for translators. Yeah, and if they do a shitty fucking job, they shouldn't have those jobs, right? There can be... It's not mutually exclusive where you can be empathetic to people that lose their job, but also realize that, hey, like, this person is intentionally doing a shitty job and misrepresenting what the anime is supposed to be, they shouldn't be doing the fucking task. They should be fired for that. At least when it comes to official anime and dubbing as well. So, yeah, th the point is, is that there is actual really good translators that, you know, it makes me sad they're going to lose their job. But once again, this is the result of a few things. Companies, obviously, they want to use AI now to cut cost. I mean, yep. they obviously looks really good with the, the stockholders and everybody at the top, like the big CEOs, etc. Because obviously AI is in the new. Everybody needs it. They want to see how they're, you know, reinventing things or innovating the company etc yep. so this was just bound to happen to begin with and just a new trend every company basically needs some form of ai associated with basically the buzzword is ai right before it was like nft different crypto machine learning or well, ai machine learning is kind of hand to hand but like now is the hottest thing is every company somehow wants ai right somehow let's fit ai into our product with it so it was just bound to happen so to kind of summarize all this this is pretty much the like the continuation of an ongoing story the consequences of a lot of bad actors is you know actions and obviously people that are legitimately good within the industry just having to face the repercussions as well that does suck for those people right there's probably some good localizers probably some genuinely you know, enthusiastic people that are willing to give the translation that it deserves. Not only does it deserve, but it, it is what it is. But then you have bad faith actors going in trying to, you know, insert their own political agenda. And then the free market's going to react like this. They're going to be like, you know what? Fuck you. AI subs. We're going to pirate this shit. Don't care. You know, if even if people lose their jobs, that's on you. And there's a little bit of truth on both ends where it's just like, it sucks for them to lose their job. But this is the consequences of your action and the people are simply going to behave and you know vote with their foot right they're not going to watch this shit anymore they're going to say fuck that shit we're just going to pirate we're going to watch the ai subs instead but uh overall though i mean from what i've heard the nokotan translation is pretty good so yeah i mean it's playing devil's advocate but anyways let's move into the next topic of the comment section which is the comment section yeah this so is what i want to know has fully disabled their comment section on their site. And their justification for that was protecting our community. At Crunchyroll, we prioritize creating a safe and respectful community environment to maintain... So I'm going to assume people are just straight up roasting Crunchyroll. And in the same light as how YouTube basically disabled the dislike function, or at least being visible, after being shit on after all these different YouTube recaps and, you know, different corporations getting straight up just ratioed. Is this the same thing where Crunchyroll's like, fuck, we're getting cooked. It's time to disable comment section. Disabled their comment section on their site. And the reason for it is because apparently of this. So this was made. I, I heard it was one specific anime too. I heard like one specific anime, you know, started this. Literally this morning, once this information came out, yeah. and basically, apparently, there was a lot of toxicity. People. LG. So it's a Yaoi anime, right? So the comments are saying LGBT BS run, another attempt to scrunch roll. So they just. I'm not sure what kind of show it is, but I think it's male, male Yaoi stuff, right? And there's a lot of people that are homophobic, and they're just basically shitting on the anime, saying this is a separate agenda. You know, the, the, the gay mob is out to get you. I, I think that this is an overreaction, right? Like, for sure, these comments are out of place. Like, there is no space to be homophobic. Like, you, you want to be discriminatory against that. Just leave them alone, right? You can say what you want, but you can also get clapped for it, too. And if you're openly, you know, saying hate speech against a fucking discriminated group, then, like, don't you think that, like... 
it should not be okay. But to disable the comment section is also different, right? If you, the, the beauty about free speech is that you can say whatever the fuck you want, right? But here's the other part. Other people will also shit on you for that take. And that's the beauty. You say, you say some dumb opinion, 10 other people will dogpile and call you stupid, right? And that's the beauty. So I don't think disabling the comment section is the right way to go on about things. People were just straight up review bombing, you know, uh, a new anime called Twilight Out of Focus that was on Crunchyroll, like a new series. Twilight Out of Focus? What is this? Hold up. I just want to see a cover picture. Out of Focus anime. Let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the Yaoi anime, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, nobody was saying this shit about fucking, what's it called? Nobody was saying this shit about Windbreaker. Because you know why? Windbreaker, like, slipped that shit in. It's like, yeah, we're a delinquent anime. Fights. Hype fights. L little, little bit of, you know, a little bit of game moments. But hype fights, right? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody fucking critiquing that. But clearly this is, like, straight up a BL anime. For its BL-like themes. Now, yeah. this kind of connects with a lot of things going on, even with the translations, with, you know, political agenda pushing, etc. You have stuff like that, and people are assuming that since it's a BL show and all that, that um, it straight up is trying to push an agenda. But here's the thing. as an So what? If you have a straight anime, are they pushing an agenda? Because everything, at the end of the day, with these people that are so fragile about their fucking sexuality is that, Oh no! They're gonna make my kids gay if they make these gay animes. It's like, no, you think that the normalcy is heterosexuality. So suddenly if there's one show that delves in a different thing that you don't go with, the world is not out to fucking get you. Like, why do you get so triggered? Just, let, just don't watch. Just leave them alone. Just don't fucking watch. An anime fan that's been a part of this culture for decades at this point, BL has always been a part of the anime and manga space. For sure it, it is. I mean, you go back 12 years ago, you know, Fujoshis were a big thing that everybody talked about. You don't really hear that term much anymore. I wonder why. But the point of the matter is, is that there was a lot of BL lovers. People loved, like, you know, just different BL shows. I mean, Yuri on Ice was a big one that got a lot of people into it, obviously <laughs> killing Stalking. That's the funniest show name. This is Yuri on Ice, but isn't it two dudes on ice? So it should be Yaoi on Ice, but then I think the two dudes are extremely feminine and not masculine. And in that sense, we come full circle and it is indeed Yuri on Ice. Because that's femboy on femboy. <laughs> All those different type of series, and yeah. BL's always been a space within the anime manga community for a very long time. It's nothing relatively new. It's basically the same thing you see with Yuri shows, like you know, girls band tour, uh, uh, girls band. Exactly. Nobody freaks out. Nobody freaks out when it's a lesbian show. It's if it's a Yuri show, everyone's like, pick, pick Yuri. As soon as you have a Yaoi show, it's just like. Political agenda pushing LGBTQ deep state try to out to get us. It's like There is no principal stance here. You have no consistency. You don't even believe in what you're saying. You're just triggered because there's a bunch of dudes on screen and it makes you feel a certain way. So instead of trying to process your feelings and realize what's going on, you start fucking screeching how this is a fucking narrative that the government's trying to fucking push on you. Band or whatever. It's just like when you think about um the situation, it's kind of wild to see just so much toxicity around the BL show and all that. Now, personally, and I think this might be a boomer take. This might be a boomer take, but I think that there has been recently a shift in dynamics of how progressive teenagers are. Not just teenagers, young adults. I think there was a time when even the R word, right, that I'm letting fly a lot of times, recently, like regarded, right? You can't say that shit. There was a time when people were saying the N word all the time, bro. White people, Asian people, just they just straight saying it. And then I think around like 2016, 2015-ish, Start, things start to change. Things start to get a lot more left-leaning. It became social media and everything became a lot more um, progressive and um, LGBTQ things were a lot more accepted and slurs were just completely banned and it was all good. And then after Rona time, something, it's almost like a paradigm shift happened where all of that beliefs are not as popular as it used to be. And this 
other group that was so used to edgy humor and all these slurs and racist jokes and, you know, um, shitting on gay people and homophobia and transphobia became a lot more accepted recently, in my opinion. Maybe it's a boomer take, but with the advent of huge, you know, um, like huge content creators, not even just Aiden Ross, but there's a lot of really shitty people. Like, what's that other kid too? That kid that walks around with the fucking bodyguard, Jack Doherty, and Neon. There's a lot of shitty fucking streamers that a lot of kids watch. And those graders are just openly just hateful towards these groups. And then obviously they're pretty much role models. And I think that it's like a paradigm shift. And now the reason that you have a lot of people finally being more open with this criticism on LGBTQ or anything else is a result of... Again, a paradigm shift of different generations being accepted into different social norms. I have not watched it, so I can't confirm everything, and obviously since the comments are disabled, I can't confirm if this is all legit or not, but basically there was a lot of bad actors as well within the comments section being very toxic for a BL show, and Crunchyroll effectively shut it down. They completely shut down the comments. Forever. No more comments. Ever. Really. Shit section not just on that series but on the Everything. entire platform and i'm just like scratching my head like okay look boycott crunchyroll boycott until comments are back what's gonna happen with people now i understand that you don't like review bombing you don't like toxicity i i understand that i i do understand crunchyroll trying to protect their space to a degree to protect the community but completely closing off all the this is absolute nuclear option like you should have a filter of like hate speech or spam words right like as soon as there's like a homophobic slur or some kind of sentence or phrase you should be able to detect that and ban it or you should have some kind of report system to like report these hateful comments right so absolutely just banning it like that i think is an extremely l move from crunchyroll the comment sections because they're just being lazy bad actors it. on one episode on one series when you have hundreds upon hundreds of series on your site that's probably had a lot of controversy associated with it as well just feels like it is over dramatic like they are just going too far they're pushing that like line way too hard to close down the comment section basically if i had to take an educated guess crunchyroll wanted to close the comment section to begin with they've been wanting to get rid of it for a while oh so this was not the main reason but the final straw that broke the back wonder i don't know i i honestly i don't really read crunch roll comment section so like has it actually been that bad for a long time i mean the same could be said for when you go to like youtube like when you go to youtube for like <laughs> certain videos or news channels etc you know it's gonna be a fucking cesspool of the lowest lowest just bottom of the barrel of humanity, right? You don't want to be there in the YouTube comment section. The comment section's always disabled yeah. because companies don't want, obviously, you know, to have their image look bad. That's it's why a liability. the dislike bar was removed on YouTube, and that was the big reason. It's because, obviously, it promoted, you know, look at making news companies or certain individuals looking real. But, like, that's what the people are saying, and now you're silencing that. That is... That's blatant fucking abuse of power of like, all right, the people are saying that this video fucking sucks, right? Who am I going to believe? A random video or a fucking like thousands of thousands of people voting with their own personal experience. That's why I love Reddit, right? I, I hate Reddit, but I do love Reddit because a lot of the times these are not like artificially created articles using specific keywords to maximize search engine optimization on Google. Whenever I search something on Google, I, I search something and then I put Reddit at the end because it's going to give me real people's experiences. Are they true or not? I don't know, but it's more data points for me to take upon, right? But just completely removing that shit again is just so cringe. Really bad, like official companies, because the dislike bar would be like 50,000 dislikes, only 1,000 likes. And obviously, companies don't like that. They might not want to advertise on YouTube if the dislike bar is just so massive. Make a better fucking video. Clearly, you're doing something wrong that resonates the wrong way to fucking advert, like the people, right? If the people are your fucking clients, then shouldn't this serve as a data point to do better? I don't know. I feel like this is just a backward ways of doing things. And they can't build an audience. So because of that, you know, Crunchyroll potentially disabling the comment section was basically an ongoing move just to completely, you know, cut any form of dissatisfaction or negativity around series. And I think one of the big reasons or causes for this probably is because of sponsorships, etc. And l let me talk about that. So... You can't be having a bunch of fucking liability comments on the platform if Crunchyroll is going to have more different corporations that they're collaborating with. It makes sense, right? Just instead of, like, risking it, just go with the clean, squeaky way of just absolutely no nope, ban all that shit so the advertisers are going to stay on our site. Well, 
as someone that has done sponsorships in the past and I've talked about products, etc., when it comes to being sponsored by things or having the privilege to host certain things, usually what it means is, is you can't... You gotta be squeaky clean. No slurs. No offended edgy jokes. PG-13. You wanna fucking advertise? You better be ready to advertise for a broad audience where lewd things, NFFWs, anything like that can't be on the line. Really talk negatively about that said product. Exactly. For instance, like if there is a- You playing a game you got sponsored by, you can't shit talk the game, right? You've seen the drama in VTubers where they're sponsored to play these games and they can't even voice their true opinions about it because it's a fucking sponsored segment and it looks back on the company to shit talk a different product offered by a different corporation. Um, a, a series that Crunchyroll is offering, or if I was offering a series, etc., on a video, you know, you can't really talk negatively about that product too much, or those companies might not work with you ever again. And in this case, I feel like Crunchyroll shutting down this comment section more or less is like damage control because obviously they have a lot of connections when they in the industry, they have a lot of people they work with with Sony, etc., and different companies in Japan. And so to maintain that potential connection with partners, etc., yeah. they, they the probably nuclear closed option. down the comment section because they don't want that to reflect badly on them when they try to make discussions behind closed doors to have content sponsored etc that's my assumption but regardless to me. of that perspective i do think that this is really bad for Crunchyroll to close down the comment section because i feel like one of the biggest aspects boycott Crunchyroll, review bomb fucking uh, i don't know just stop using the product and then they'll be like Oh, we're sorry. We've taken a look back on our previous action and decided to open up comment section. The more that you vote with your feet, vote with your wallet, stop using their service, then there'll be pressure to make a move, right? If you don't, nothing's gonna change, man. ...of any anime and its growth is the discussion. I didn't use the community, like, comment section for Crunchyroll a lot, but I did read it. I did read it often. I didn't comment a lot, and it, it was interesting just seeing people's reactions. And for them to disable that, that really is going to cause a lot of, like, you know, disconnect with the actual site, with the actual audience. And I feel like that's just, you know... Not a good thing. I think Crunchyroll really just shot themselves in the foot. I, I don't think this was a good idea by any... Problem is, Crunchyroll holds the majority of anime licenses? My brother in Christ. You have the internet. You can do whatever you want. Like, like, like... <laughs> I don't need to spell it out for you, right? The high seas are open for anybody. Vote with your wallets. Any means them doing this and it's a key feature that you know a lot of people have loved for a very long time and then just to randomly shut it down thanks to you know some really toxic individuals on one series on one episode I think is quite the overreaction I agree because there's been a lot more toxic series the comments are shit but Crunchyroll is using an extreme move instead of making better moderation they're being lazy for the sake of their sponsorship I think this is a very short-sighted move that may hinder them in the future. Like, if people are truly going to, you know, vote with their wallet, stop using their fucking platform, it's going to send a huge message. There's a lot more toxic fan bases on Crunchyroll, potentially, than just, oh, this BL anime. I'm just going to be blunt. But obviously, Crunchyroll will be Crunchyroll, and they continuously do things that sometimes it's just not for the best. But uh, I'll leave it at that. I just, I wanted to talk about this. This was a lot of stuff that came out today. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. How That's the video. Go give Chibi a like. He always makes, you know, good insightful videos about what's going on in the anime space and... Listen, like, whether, you not, whether or not you're gay or not, none of that shit matters to me. You live your life the way you want it, as long as it's not harming anybody. You can be a furry. I don't like furries. Doesn't mean I'm gonna go out and extremely just, like, say hateful shit about them. Sometimes I'll make jokes, but, like, to say homophobic shit like that on the, you know, the comment section... Like, there's, there's no space for that. But to then use the nuclear option and just disable comments, that's also fucking stupid. It's just... Shitty situation. I hope people just genuinely vote with their foot. Stop using Crunchyroll. Use different services. Get the fuck off of it. You're a fucking... You have the high seas as well. If you want these corporations to enact change, you can't do it by hoping for it. You need to hurt them where it hurts. And it's the fucking bottom line. Stop using their service. Boycott them. Brigade them. Let them know how this is inappropriate. And then they'll act accordingly.